So welcome to this week's time of worship. I invite you to sing along and worship God with us. I do have a short, a little announcement that uh, this Sunday, November 15th, uh, we're going to be holding in-person worship, a worship service at Mount Soledad, a Presbyterian church, at 10 a.m. It will be outside. We'll have social distancing. Um, everyone will be wearing masks. You bring your own chair. I invite you to come and join us uh, at 10 a.m. on Sunday, November 15th. But if you're unable to come, if you just want to worship along with us right now, um, I invite you to do that as we sing these songs. Saints join in, shouting creation. 
ancient song will praise Him. Praise Him on the sun and the moon. All of His shining stars. Oh, praise Him from above. Oh, praise Him. Oh, you highest heavens. Together with one mighty Saints join in singing this heavenly song. All the saints join in, all the saints join in shouting creation song. All the saints join in, all the saints join in singing this heavenly song. All the saints join in, all the saints join in. Shouting creation song. All the saints join in. 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 of our God and King Lift up your voice and with us sing Alleluia Alleluia Thou burning sun with golden Thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh praise him, oh praise him, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. so strong ye clouds that sail in heaven along oh praise him alleluia thou rising moon in praise rejoice ye lights of evening find the voice
So listen to these words from Psalm chapter 8. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the works of your fingers, the moon and stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds, and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Hear the word of God. From Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from up there? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, God who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over Israel. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. And the Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. All of you joining us in person this Sunday uh, at Mount Soledad uh, on November 15th, uh, and all of you joining us now online are really similar to that psalmist who wrote Psalm 121, we just read. It, the psalm is called what's uh, a song of ascent to be sung by Jewish pilgrims as they made their way once a year up Mount Zion to the city of Jerusalem and into the temple courtyards to worship the Lord. For many, it had been a whole year since they had been able to journey to Mount Zion to worship the Lord with others in a congregation. And for us at Mount Soledad, quite about a year, but eight months ago on Sunday, March 15th, our worship center went dark for the first time in 50 years. We canceled in-person worship services due to the pandemic. But now, Eight months to the day on 
November 15th, many of us will gather uh, again uh, here on Mount Soledad to worship God in song and prayer and welcome one another and wave to one another and to hear and respond to God's word. It's good to be on the mountain. Jesus promised that wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of you. And we all claim this promise as many of us continue to connect online. And if you're watching this on Sunday morning at around 10 a.m., think of us who are gathered on the mountain right now because it's good to be on the mountain. Now, I'm going to take a few moments to deepen and broaden your understanding of how God uses mountains as recorded in Scripture and still uses Mount Soledad to help us encounter and propel God's plan. First of all, think in the Old Testament of Mount Sinai, that place in the book of Exodus where the Israelites came to. It was the place of revelation of God's character and his commandments. It is at Mount Sinai that we leave our infantile self-indulgences and enter into maturity of loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving our neighbor as ourself. It is at Mount Sinai where we deepen our relationship with God to the bedrock of reverence and holy, fearful respect that burns with love. Down in the lowlands, anything goes. Corners are cut. White lies are winked at. But here on the mountain, God reveals the rules for relationship with God and relationship with our neighbor. And we say yes. Today, let Mount Soledad be the place where you leave that golden calf behind, whatever has taken God's place in your heart. Leave it behind. Let go of that shiny metal idol and grasp instead the granite that's chiseled with God's character and God's care for you. Well, next, I think of Mount Pisgah, again, in the book of uh, Exodus and Deuteronomy. That was the mountain that overlooked the promised land that God led Moses to be able to climb and stand upon its peak and look down in and see spread out before him the land that the Israelites would inherit. They had left Egyptian slavery. They had made it through wilderness challenge. And now at the doorstep, of the promised land, Moses at Mount Pisgah looks down and sees it all. It is filled with produce and plenty. But we also remember the sobering truth that Moses could see it, but not himself enter it because he died. He would die having accomplished the task that God had given him to lead those Israelites to the doorstep of the promised land. Mount Pisgah is the biblical image that stirred within the soul of Martin Luther King as he declared from in front of the Lincoln Memorial, I have been to the mountaintop. I can see the promised land. I might not get there with you, but I am not afraid. Dr. King's dream, which is God's vision for humanity, is seen from the Mount Pisgahs of our life. Today, let Mount Soledad be your Mount Pisgah for racial justice and equity. Back in June here at Mount Soledad, we began a continuing conversation Zoom group to learn, to listen from each other and other godly sources, how we can be the bridge across racial division. It is a humbling and honest experience for me on Mount Pisgah. It is our Mount Pisgah view, seeing both the challenge and committing to the change that is needed within ourselves and our families, within our neighborhoods and our nations. What Mount Pisgah 
what is a Mount Pisgah that God has led you to? Ask God to show you the glimmer of that preferable future in the distance. Unfailingly look at the challenges before you and unflinchingly commit to the changes that are needed to get there. Now, the first mountain that Jesus encountered was not good. It was what I call Mount Temptation in Matthew chapter 4 at verse 8. Next, the devil took Jesus to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. I will give it all to you, Satan said, if you will kneel down and worship me. You know, the devil can't create, but boy, he can make a counterfeit. And here in a mocking mimicry of Mount Sinai, where the one true God bonded with Israel, Satan now on this mountain brokers a different deal to Jesus. Gain the whole world, but forfeit your soul. You will get all of earth's shiny glory, Jesus, if you but stand in the shadow of Satan. Now on that mountain of temptation, Jesus says, no, I worship the Lord God and serve only him. Let Mount Soledad be the place today where you make the decision to say no to the counterfeit that promises what you desire, but at a terrible, terrible cost. You know, in Psalm 121 that we read earlier, the worshiper going up to Mount Zion said, my eyes look to the mountaintops. From where does my help come? At the time that this Psalm was written, Atop all the hills round Jerusalem, you could see the dark silhouette of pagan altars of worship in those high places. Altars to Baal, to Ashtoreth, to Moloch, they were all degenerative religions. And the psalmist asks rhetorically, do I try to appease or appeal to these counterfeit deities that aren't really real? No, the psalmist says, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I'm not dazzled by the highest mountains of the world, be it Everest, Denali, Whitney, Fuji, Rainier, Haleakala. It's not the amulets of Ashtoreth that protect me. It is the Lord. It is not the trinkets of Molech that guard me. It is the Lord. It is not the tattoos and self-scarring with Baal's name in gar engraved upon my flesh. No, the Lord God who made heaven and earth is my guard and my guide. God alone will I worship and serve. Well, next is the Mount of Transfiguration for Jesus in Matthew chapter 17. For Jesus takes Peter, John, and James up a mountain, and there they behold God shining glory upon Jesus to the point of an optical radiance, transfigured by the glory of God, Jesus is. And Moses and Elijah also appear, and Jesus talks with these representatives of the law and the prophets. And then Peter gushes that he will memorialize this moment on the mountain with some rickety booths made of brushwood and palm fronds. But God booms aloud this. Jesus is my beloved son. Listen to him. And when Peter looks again, the light show is over. The, the holy holograms of Moses and Elijah are gone. That mystic cloud representing God's presence, gone the holy glow of transfiguration, gone. Only Jesus with sandaled feet and calloused carpenter hands and a peasant robe round his shoulders. Only Jesus. Listen to him. Let Mount Soledad be a place where you worship 
Jesus and listen to him. All of God's revelation, the law and the prophets, the history and the poetry is funneled into and fulfilled in Jesus. But there's one final mountain in God's redemptive story. We call it Mount Calvary. The scripture calls it Golgotha, and the common Aramaic of the day, that meant skull. It was also called Calvary from the Latin word the Roman soldiers used, the Latin word calva, meaning bald head or, or skull. Because this place was a skull-shaped hill on Mount Zion, outside the walls of Jerusalem. It was the site of Jesus' crucifixion. Like half dome of Yosemite, except without the beauty. Calvary was a scraped bare place to die. It was the crucifixion location alongside the road out of town so that Israelites coming and going would be starkly reminded never, ever to mess with Roman brutal authority. It was a grisly reality show without romance or redemption. Now Calvary was the place of judgment and death. Tolkien in The Lord of the Rings called it Mount Doom, where the humble Frodo went to destroy the power of evil by throwing that ring into the fire. And Jesus in the gospel story willingly and humbly went there to Mount Calvary. Now usually on Mount Soledad, it's a beautiful day with a vista view all the way to the sea. It's hard to let thoughts of Mount Calvary into our minds there. Still, that Mount Calvary place of ugliness became a beautiful place of victory. For by the death of Jesus, the sinless Son of God, all sins were paid for. All judgment was funneled with the fury of holiness upon the one who took your place. And his death suckered the power of evil into the tomb, the tomb where Jesus broke, broke free from three days later. Mount Doom, Mount Death, Mount Demonic Evil shot all its ammo at Jesus, the Son of God. But God was more powerful. God's life triumphed over death. God's love triumphed over hate. God's grace and mercy triumphs over penalty and pain. Our daughter and her husband are expecting their first child in about four months. And they took a trip recently to Yosemite and they took a picture of themselves while standing at Glacier Point, and you can see Half Dome behind them in a distance. Every time I see Half Dome, I do think of Calvary, that place of death. But in the foreground, in the picture they took, the way that she turned her profile just a bit showed that baby bump. It, it was a small Half Dome of life. At Mount Calvary, in the background, is death. But in the foreground that you see with the eyes of faith is life that cannot be conquered. It is life when you take Christ into your life. It is life eternal. It is life everlasting. It is life that changes and transforms you every day. Let's pray. Lord God, 
Thank you from Mount Sinai, that revelation of your character and care for us. May we come to the mountain to encounter you again with holy reverence and to know the rules of our relationship with you and with our neighbors. Lord, thank you for Mount Pisgah, those times in our life that we can see by your Holy Spirit ability to see the future, a preferable future that is your desire, God, for us and for the world that we see it. God, help us commit to the changes needed to get to that future and help us trust your strength to get us, all of us there. God, thank you for Mount Temptation where we can say no to Satan's counterfeit. Lord, thank you for the Mount of Transfiguration, those places and times when we worship and listen to Jesus. All your revelation funneled into and fulfilled in him. Lord, thank you. And Lord, thank you even for Mount Calvary, that place of death where you gave us life eternal. God bless Mount Soledad. All of us in our congregation and visitors alike who connect online and on campus this day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight, visions of a rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song 
praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. So God, thank you that you are the one that directs our footsteps. You are the one that, that guides our path. So once again, we give our life to you and say that this is our story because you're a part of it. You're a part of our story, God. And I guess we're a part, even more so, we're a part of your story. We want to be a part of the story that you are making. So we thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen.